morning, everyone. Uh, we'll begin this morning with our prayer for Estella, which is inside your, I think. There we go. We we'll say it together. Lord be with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 10, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A prayer for Anzac Day. God of love and liberty, we bring our thanks today for the peace and security we enjoy. We remember those who in time of war faithfully serve their country. We pray for their families and for ourselves whose freedom was won at such a cost. Make us a people zealous for peace and hasten the day when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither learn, neither learn war anymore. This we pray in the name of the one who gave his life for the sake of the world, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. 
Gracious and loving God, my, may my words and our thoughts be pleasing to you. Amen. Well, in our Gospel reading this morning, we hear Jesus call himself the Good Shepherd. He said these words to his disciples before he sacrificed his own life by going willingly to the cross. And, repeat the, and we repeat these words of Jesus here this morning on the eve of Anzac Day because the sacrifice of Jesus is still at the centre of our Anzac remembrance. At services across the nation and across the ditch, these words from John's Gospel will be quoted as we remember the sacrifice of others modelled on Jesus' sacrifice. From John chapter 15, verse 13, no one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life for, the way, for one's friends. In the remembering of the sacrifice of others, we keep the Anzac spirit alive. And in re our remembering, we honour those ordinary Australians and New Zealanders and the sacrifice that they made for others. On Anzac Day, we also remember that war is profoundly destructive. In the acknowledgement of the sacrifice of others, we in no way glorify war. That would be like glorifying Pontius Pilate or the Romans for taking Jesus to the cross. And even as we meet today the most destructive war in Europe since World War II is underway, and we honour the people of the Ukraine who fight bravely to protect their nation, their communities and their families, we also feel grieved by the loss of life on both sides and the effect that that has on communities and families. Since Anzac Day was celebrated over 125 years ago, the word Anzac and its meaning has become embedded in our national identity. It started off as a use, useful acronym devised by a signaller in Egypt uh, to combine the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps into a simple, um, easy to recognise statement. And the Anzac word has become not only part of our language, but also part of our national identity. But it isn't really a day of patriotism, and it's certainly not a day for its often ugly relative nationalism. But we do collectively celebrate what we have come to recognise as an Anzac spirit. And the qualities that make up this Anzac spirit include mateship, humour, sacrifice, endurance and courage. These qualities may well have shone through on the battlefield, but they are evident in many facets of Australian civil society, especially when a natural disaster hits, whether it's a cyclone or a, a flood or a bushfire in Australia or an earthquake in New Zealand. We come together to rescue one another, to ease suffering, to provide food and shelter, to care for one another, to show solidarity with victims. In many ways, those who serve their nation or their communities honour Jesus' commandment to love one another. And we commemorate Anzac Day in many ways in Australia. After the COVID restrictions of the last couple of years, no doubt record crowds will gather across uh, our two countries at dawn services. And some will attend Anzac breakfasts. Some will proudly march later in the morning, either wearing medals earned in service to their country or worn in memory and honour of those who did. New Zealanders call Anzac Day a sacred holiday. It combines a commemoration with a celebration. It's a day when we not only remember those who served the nation in war and other operations, but we celebrate uh, in the afternoon. Many will catch up over old mates, over a beer and a yarn. Some will participate in that quintessentially Australian game of two-up uh, this weekend, over the whole weekend, apparently. Still others will celebrate by watching the magpies go head-to-head -head with the bombers or the roosters up against the dragons. And others will simply enjoy the day with family and friends. We are free to spend the day how we wish. 
but m primarily and most importantly, Anzac Day is a day of commemoration and remembrance. And we especially remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, those who gave their lives. The Australian War Memorial records the details of those who have died in 43 military conflicts since colonisation in 1788. And these conflicts include the Sudan in 1885, through the Boer War, where my own grandfather served, two world wars, Korea, Vietnam, two Gulf Wars, East Timor, Afghanistan, and many, many peacekeeping operations around the world. The role of honour is long, naming over 102,000 Australians who paid the ultimate price. And although I never went to war, I do know from my naval service that there is great honour in serving one's nation. And although I didn't experience direct conflict, I did experience that Anzac spirit, those qualities in, that permeates defence service, mateship, humour, endurance, sacrifice and courage. And the Anzac spirit is still the lifeblood of defence service. It what motivates many people to serve. And in many families, including my own, the tradition of service is long and strong across many generations. This morning I'd like to share two stories of ordinary Australians who demonstrated the qualities that make up the Anzac spirit. Both gave their lives in service to their nation. The Navy's current fleet of six submarines are all named after members of the RAN who served with distinction. And one of the submarines is named after ordinary seaman Edward Sheehan from Lower Barrington in Tasmania. It's most unusual to have a naval vessel named after a non-commissioned sailor. And this honour was given to commemorate an act of bravery that cost him his life. Ordinary seaman Sheehan was serving on HMAS Armadale in the Timor Sea in 1942 when the ship was attacked by enemy aircraft. Two torpedoes hit the ship and she sank within minutes. Ordinary seaman Sheehan was wounded quite badly, fatally, but returned to his gun and continued firing, shooting down enemy aircraft before he was killed. Sheehan's shipmates reported that he maintained his fire as the water rose above his feet and remained firing as he disappeared beneath the waves. About 3,500 Australian Army nurses served either overseas or in Australia during World War II. And those who served close to the battlefield experienced not only the challenges and discomforts of nursing in make makeshift field hospitals, but also experienced the horrors of war. Many Army nurses sacrificed their health and well-being in the service of Australia. Some sacrificed their lives. And one of those was Sister Kathleen Noyce from Inverell in New South Wales. She was one of 65 nurses who were being evacuated from Singapore when the vessel that she was on was torpedoed and bombed by enemy aircraft and the ship sank quickly. The survivors in lifeboats were struck by enemy fire, but some reached Banker Island off the coast of Sumatra and 12 Australian nurses were either killed in the attack on the ship or drowned in the sea. And the remaining nurses reached Banker Island in lifeboats on rafts or by drifting with the tide. Sister Noyce gave up her own life jacket and gave it away to another nurse who ended up being able to tell that story when she returned home after the war. Once on the island, they were captured by Japanese soldiers and a few days later, Sister Noyce was one of 22 nurses who were massacred on Rajai Beach. On Anzac Day, we commemorate the service and the sacrifice of people like ordinary seaman Hetty Sheehan from Lower Barrington and Sister Kathleen Noyce from Inverell. They're just two of the more than 102,000 Australians whose service was costly to them, to their families and to their nation. They laid down their lives for their sisters and brothers. 
Their service was selfless. It was sacrificial. Their service and their sacrifice was Christ-like. In the Gospel according to John in chapter 15, one of Jesus' final instructions to his disciples before he gives his own life is to do this, to love one another. To serve God is to love one another. And Jesus reveals the true nature of love. It is sacrificial. In verse 13, John records this of Jesus' words, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Ordinary seaman Sheen was not seeking glory when he made the ultimate sacrifice. Teddy Sheen was protecting his shipmates while they were evacuating the ship and many went on to survive the war. Nor was Kathleen Noyce seeking glory. Sister Noyce and her fellow nurses had set up a field hospital near the beach with very limited supplies to care for the sick and the injured survivors when the Japanese soldiers rounded them up, marched them into the sea and executed them. Kathleen Noyce was simply caring for her fellow passengers and the other nurses. And nor was Jesus seeking glory for himself as he prepared to give his own life for others. Jesus' motivation to give his life was so that his father would be glorified and that others would have life through him. Dying for one's friends is the ultimate sacrifice. It defines love. And I doubt that, there's, that there is one person here who would not be prepared to offer the life in exchange for someone else's. Certainly for a family member, perhaps a dear friend, and some would even give it for a complete stranger. That's what love is. We see that in John's first letter. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. A good shepherd is one who's willing to lay down their life for their own sheep. They don't abandon their sheep when they see danger coming. Teddy Sheen and Kathleen Noyce were being good shepherds and each of us who call Christ Lord are called to be good shepherds, to love sacrificially, to give ourselves to others sacrificially and not to abandon those that we love. This Anzac Day, we remember the sacrifice of those like ordinary seaman Sheen and sister Kathleen Noyce and the many thousands who have lost their lives in the service of their nation, the hundreds of thousands who still carry the scars of war, and the millions of Australians and New Zealanders who are in some way affected by the experience of those who have served. This morning we also remember the sacrificial love of Jesus as we gather around his table to give thanks in the Eucharist. And we honour him by responding to his challenge, echoed in the words of John, to be good shepherds, to love one another and to show love to others. At the Eucharist, we also place our hope in Christ's glorious reign and look forward to the day when there will be no more war, when nations will beat their swords into ploughshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Amen. Andrew is going to lead us in a uh, hymn of reflection, Abide With Me, and I invite you to remain seated and contemplate on the music as we listen. Thank you, Andrew. 